Sin is trickery. It's false goods, fraud, deceit, the deep fake. It's always been trickery. In scripture, the first characteristic that identifies Satan is craftiness. That's the ability to fool someone. And boy, did he make some fools. He presented this forbidden fruit as something attractive and good and promising life. But when Adam and Eve ate it, they only tasted death. You see, what appeared to be attractive and good actually cut them off from everything that is actually attractive and good. This has always been the tactic of sin. It presents itself as something good, but it ends up being something bad. Every sin, every time. And this is the heritage of pornography. The digitized images glowing on your screen actually have this ancient lineage. It's a lineage of trickery and deception. I read Proverbs 5 verses 3 and 4 a lot in counseling situations. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she's as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. So what at first seems sweet in your mouth, it actually wrenches the gut. And what at first is smooth to the touch actually wounds the soul. I realize this sounds extreme in a culture that's normalized pornography, but porn is not normal. It's not harmless. It's an imaginary world of false goods that actually cuts you off from the genuine world of real goods. It conditions you to be attracted to shallow and twisted things so that you find the deep and pure things boring. So what do I mean by these real goods? Well, God put you in this world to know him and to be like him. This world is good because of that central truth. See, God makes himself known in everything we see and in everything we touch. All of it is an avenue of grace, a way he shows his goodness to people who are made in his image. So even our senses were designed to be attracted to that kind of goodness and to rejoice in thankfulness for the overwhelming generosity of God in showing so much goodness to us. <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? It's because it is good the very definition of good. And it's important that we start with the good to understand the bad. See, what makes porn bad is that it taps into something good, but it distorts it. It creates a false version of good that imprisons and belittles those who use it. It, it seems like freedom, but it's actually slavery. So, how does it trick you into this slavery? Well, here's what I want to be really clear to you. Sin is a way of both seeing and acting in the world that seeks good apart from God. It means disbelieving what God has said about himself, about his world, about him as the source of all that's truly good. It means preferring some false version of good to God's version of good. Scripture says far more than this about sin, but I want to focus on these two ways sin affects us because I think it helps you understand why porn is as bad as it is. So first, I mentioned that sin is a way of seeing the world. That trickery sort of gets in you. The Bible calls our own desires inside deceitful at times. This ancient trickery deceives your heart and thus it actually ends up deceiving your eyes. Here's how it works. When you refuse to believe what God says about himself, you begin to see the world differently. Sin makes you look at the world with your color spectrum kind of calibrated wrong. You see good as bad and bad as good. Scripture calls this the lust of the flesh and of the eyes and the pride of life. Porn is a way of seeing good apart from God, specifically. 
It's a seeking of some version of joy or pleasure, intimacy or belonging, security or comfort in a use of your sexuality that falls outside God's good design. And this is the tragedy of sin as a way of seeing. Porn comes into your heart through your eyes and it changes your heart and conditions the way you then see everything. And, and the way you see everything is affected. You lose your ability to discern between good and bad, beautiful and ugly, what pleases God and what displeases him.